Kristen, it's Shelly. Hey. And Josh. Hey, Shelly and Josh. How's it going? I think I feel like I should say, doing good. But <laughs> I let my husband do that. Josh, are you here too? I am, and I am doing good. <laughs> In that exact cadence. <laughs> okay, so I s- answer the phone the same way all the time. So what? <laughs> yeah. It makes me laugh every time. Shelly, I have a really burning uh, question real quick, because every single podcast episode has ended with the same exact unanswered question, and only you know the answer, I believe, which is, what is the car plan? Oh, it is actually not me. Oh, who is saying that then? So on the royalty-free soundbite that I grabbed off the internet, (laughs) that was on it. That's hilarious. I have always thought that was Shelly. It sounds so much (laughs) like you. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Well, we just demystified our awesomeness at the end there. I guess. It uh, is something I would ask, though. It sounded like your your guys' kitchen, like, you know, the dog <laughs> running around, the three kids, everybody's kind of talking, and Shelly just pipes up, what's the car plan? And I'm like, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, oh, my gosh. All right. So for the listeners out there wondering why all four of us are here, this is the end of our very first quarter of the podcast, and... It's so exciting to have reached this point. Uh, Thank you all for listening and following along. And and particularly, thank you for commenting, whether in person, over text message, or uh, reaching us on our socials on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. This is a moment where we want to pause and highlight listener feedback. And we thought it would be fun to get feedback, particularly from our wives, and have them weigh in a little bit, not just about the podcast, but about our friendship and all that has gone into the last 20 years. So I'm super thrilled. Thank you, Kristen and Shelly, for joining us on the podcast. Uh, So I'd love to turn it over to you guys, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, particularly just in big picture terms, about the friendship that Josh and I have shared over the last 20 years or so. Well, I think one of the biggest things that I immediately thought in listening to the podcast is to someone who does not know the two of you, they might feel like it's canned in some kind of way. Like, oh, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. <laughs> like the whole thing and the cadence, especially of, of my Josh from Missouri, and um, I, it's, it's hilarious to me because it's exactly how you guys talk. So if for all you listeners out there who are thinking this is kind of their radio voice, maybe it's their phone voice, I don't know. But actually, even when we're in person, I mean, <laughs> this is you to a T and there is no pretense or putting on a show. This is as raw as it gets. So... For, for well or ill, it is not a podcast act here. This is um, totally just you guys being you guys. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, Shelly, I'm super curious. You're the only person here that I have not heard your initial reaction when you first listened to the podcast. I'm super curious what it was, even though that is not the question that was originally asked. Oh, Sure. I I love the podcast because I feel like we're all sitting in a room together just having a conversation. So I love that aspect of it. And I think it's fun because, like Kristen said, this is just how you guys talk. This has been years of not formed conversation, I guess, but like the same type of conversation. It happens the same way all the time. And so I think it's quite appropriate that the podcast also does that. Yeah, I would add to that, not only the tone tone of voice, like I was saying, but also the formatting. You're right. I I don't think people realize that they have had this like outline for their phone calls for the last 20 years. (laughs) It's not something they just came up with uh, for for your sake. This is them. Yes. That's hilarious. Yes. Which, so Shelly, I got to know, I mean, so you, my wife, the one that I go to for support, 
Mm-hmm. I I asked you at the beginning, hey, if Josh and I formed a podcast, would you listen? And <laughs> <laughs> and your reaction was, if you're good. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I just being honest, you know. It's <laughs> so good. Uh, so I guess it says something that you've actually listened to every episode. Yeah, and I look forward to every week with the next episode. Like I said, I play it on my way to work usually in the mornings, and it's a great way to start the day. So I enjoy it. And yes, you guys are definitely worth my time and listening to. So, <laughs> and I'm kind of I'm kind of snobby when it comes to podcasts. So, for what it's worth, I enjoy listening to it. Yeah, I'm I'm usually listening when I'm kayaking on Tuesday mm. mornings, and so. I'm usually in a place where no one can hear me when I need to respond back to the podcast, which is good. You know, same with the car. You can say back whatever you need to say and you don't seem weird. But uh, (laughs) yeah, I'm not a podcast listener really at all. So you guys are kind of actually, I started listening to one other podcast after listening to this one. So you got me into podcasting. So now I'm up to a whopping two podcasts. Um, but Ooh. yeah. <laughs> so thank you. This is a great introduction to your reaction to the podcast. I want to go back to my first question that I never got an answer to. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you guys, what's your reaction to the fact that we have been friends over these last 20 years? And, you know, it's been kind of a formative relationship for the both of us. Like, I don't know. Are you, are you, do you get upset about the uh, hours and hours and hours that we spend on the phone or, or is, what's your, what's your reaction been? Well, I would say that I think it's been great. I think everyone needs, you know, at least one person. Really, I think often it it works better when it is just one person. It's kind of a confidant and, you know, your go-to person for seeking wisdom or just feeling like someone's tracking with you, you know, in your life that has watched you for more than just a second, you know. And so there's context Mm -hmm. there when you need someone to speak into your life. You know, you can't just get friendship in the crisis moments. And I think sometimes people feel like, oh, well, you know, I don't know, I'm busy. I don't have time right now to invest in, you know, a friendship or whatever. But then they get into a spot where they really need something. They need someone to speak into their lives in a specific way. And then there's not really anyone there. Um, And considering, you know, how prevalent loneliness and isolation are, in our society. I think it's been absolutely phenomenal that you guys have had each other and have had that consistency. And it's something that has built depth in each of you um, in ways that are really cool. So I think it's been a a really awesome thing for you guys to have that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think, you know, a testament to how over time a friendship builds and is created. I mean, when you're in person, it's somewhat easy, right? You can get together. But once, you know, Josh and Kristen moved, you really had to be intentional about that time and planning it. And then eventually that formed into, you know, what is it we're ultimately wanting to talk about? And just making sure that that was a weekly plan. Like marriages, right? When you get married young and you kind of grow together, uh, your friendship has kind of done that. And Kristen and I, I think, have benefited from that. You know, oftentimes I know I will say to Josh Morgan, if we're going through something or he's just struggling through something, I will often say, hey, go call Josh. Like, you just need to talk to Josh about this and then come back and we'll have a conversation about it. And I know, Kristen, you've done that as well. Oh, for sure. And actually, the most recent time I actually called you And that was because Josh and I were in an argument and I was like, you need to call Josh and get his perspective, mostly because I thought that Josh was going to side with me. And um, (laughs) so I felt that I would have an ally just obviously because my point was so obviously right that anyone else would agree with me. But since, you know, you have this friendship built up, I figured that was the best one. And he didn't want to call. He was like, I don't think we need an outside perspective right now, but you're welcome to call whoever you want to. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'm calling them. (laughs) So I called (laughs) Shelly. And Shelly, you were very kind and diplomatic and, you know, (laughs) talked me off my ledge a bit. And so thank you for that. So, yeah, we have benefited from we, we have gotten this like side friendship from you guys being friends. 
um, because Shelly, you and I haven't really uh, known each other, you know, for super long times in terms of being in the same place. I mean, it was kind of a, yeah. a year or two that we overlapped and, you know, so we didn't have our own direct friendship to build on, but it's been awesome to stay in each other's lives and, you know, watch our kids grow and, you know, kind of mm, yeah. uh, have that tracking with each other feeling, even though we are not the ones directly talking all the time. Yeah, I agree. And, I, you know, when we've gotten our families together, too, I think I think the first time we did that, we were all kind of surprised that we didn't even think about the fact that maybe not everyone would get along or uh, it might feel weird or awkward. And none of that existed. The kids got along great. We all got along great. And that was because of the friendship that both Josh's have. So, yeah, I will say getting together at that time was pretty awesome because our kids would actually say the same things, like the same kind of phrases would come out of their mouths. And it was just kind of shocking. I'm, I, of course, this friendship has been super formative, but I, I guess I didn't realize to what degree it had shaped how we raised our families. Like that was just kind of cool. Yeah, it's so funny that, you know, I remembered that particular vacation, the number of times one of our sets of kids would be like, oh, that's what my dad says, too. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, but uh, Kristen and Shelley, I don't know if we actually gave either of you a chance to introduce yourselves as independent people. And so, oh, you uh, believe that women are independent people? Wow. Okay. Thank you. For I that. wouldn't go that far, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we were joking before we started that you are somehow married to us as a unit. That is to say, <laughs> Josh and Josh. But um, and I'm curious your thoughts on that. But first, I did want to give you guys a chance to just introduce yourselves. Yeah, okay, I'll start. Yeah, I'm Kristen, for those of you who are still figuring out which voice goes with who. Um, sometimes I am referred to as Pastor Joshua's wife, and so that is a, a title that I occasionally go by, but I, in other circles, am known as Dr. K, so I am a professor of a counseling and a graduate program, and so when in my first year of teaching last year, when people would say, hey, Dr. K, I forgot that that was me. And so I had to remember that I had a new name. So, yeah, so that's kind of my day job. Let's see. Uh, I'm an Enneagram 3 wing 2, so I was slightly misrepresented in the Enneagram episode. So uh, for those of you who know me and were like, really? Okay. That was yeah, which Josh bit described incorrect. his wife wrong when talking about the Enneagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's fair, actually. I will say that, uh, just a side note, I think growing up, I actually was a two. And when I first heard about the Enneagram, I thought that I was a two. Then learning more about it, I realized, oh, I don't know if it's shifted or if I just didn't understand totally. But now I definitely operate much more as a three. And when I learned about the ways that motivation helps to find kind of which number you are that really clarified for me that my motivations are a three so so that. summarize a three for us briefly well a three um tends to be kind of driven and that type of thing but when you think about motivation and this is going to sound terrible which they say you know your enneagram number by which motivation you think sounds the worst but yeah threes are motivated by people admiring them and so, yeah, guilty as charged. <laughs> Twos are motivated by people like needing them, like they want people to need them. And I definitely do not have that uh, motivation. So. So I'm Shelly and I am currently a caregiver and an end of life doula, also known as a death doula in some circles. And... Yeah, that keeps me busy. And then my other job is doing a lot of taxi driving for the two kids we have at home right now. That is an understatement. You do a lot of driving. A lot of driving. Yeah, well, because you guys live like a million miles from everything. So <laughs> it feels that way. I mean, what is the average length of time you have to drive a kid to an activity? Uh, usually 45 minutes. Yeah, that's that's Which... far. It's a lot of driving, but then it's it's so much driving that it's not worth it to come home while they do the thing. Yeah, so I was then just she's thinking just about stuck. that. 
Yeah, so I do a lot of um, watching Netflix in my car or trying to get together with people like for coffee, but sometimes it's not quite long enough to do that. So I do a lot of time just sitting in my car, waiting on kids to be done with whatever activity they're doing. And what Enneagram number are you? Oh, I'm a nine and you'll you'll totally get it even just listening where I'm like, go ahead, do that. Yeah, you start. <laughs> and again, for those of us, including myself, who do not have the numbers memorized well, what defines a nine? Mm, a nine. I just want everyone to be happy all the time. Just even keel. I don't want to cause waves. I don't want arguments to happen. But then I'm a wing eight. So occasionally I just like really get passionate about something and, you know, it happens. It does. <laughs> and it's pretty spectacular when it does. <laughs> That's one way to call it. <laughs> Well, I do want to make sure we highlight some listener feedback because it has been really, really fun to interact with a lot of other people. You know, we're pretty new as a podcast unit, so a lot of our listeners come from our existing friends and family, though not all. And I have to say, one of my friends interacted with a podcast in a way that was so unexpected. He said, yeah, I started listening to your podcast and it's a great idea. Like you'd be on your phone with your friend talking about deep stuff. And he's like, I didn't want to listen to you do that. I wanted to get off of the podcast and go sit with my friends and do that. And I actually, you know, I'd love for him to listen, but that I loved that reaction. That was, hey, friendships are valuable. These conversations are valuable. I need to just go have more of these conversations. So Rob, if you're out there, great comment, man. That's awesome. I don't think I knew that he had said that. That's brilliant. And yes. is he doing it? A little bit of accountability here, Rob. Like, tell us how the conversations are going. Yeah. Get on Facebook. Tell us how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I had one of my friends here in Missouri. I actually found out that his wife was listening to the podcast. He'd switched to an overnight job. And in the episode about self-care and rule of life. Josh, you talked about the fact that it's challenging when you work nights and sleep days because there's this push and pull between going to family stuff and needing to sleep. And it doesn't make you a good dad to always choose the family stuff because sometimes you can be a bit of a bear and you need the sleep. His wife cited that comment to him as he was processing the exact same thing as somebody who's new or was new to overnights. And so I thought that was fascinating that it, it was sparking a conversation there. Yeah, definitely not one of the moments on the podcast I would have expected to resonate with somebody. Uh, that was me just keeping it real. So uh, that's kind of cool that that sparked something for somebody else. Yeah. Uh, but you know, now, Wives, first of all, let me pause and just say thank you guys both for being incredibly supportive as we've been experimenting with this and figuring it out. We are super grateful for you. But are there moments that we have had on the podcast that jump out to you or that you find particularly memorable or funny or that you had an interesting insight on because you kind of see behind the scenes and you know us from a different point of view? Well, I think one of the things that has struck me at a couple of different points, or I guess reactions that I've wanted to have, maybe as I'm sitting there kayaking, uh, talking back to you all, some of the things that I find myself thinking about is is actually a woman's perspective. And um, I remember in your episode about confession um, and talking about the role of that. Now, I, I guess when I introduced myself, I said I was a professor of counseling. I also neglected to mention that I've been a licensed counselor for, well, licensed about 14 years, counseling for about 17. And so one of the things that really struck me was just confession for women in churches that are typically have male-dominated staff. And being a counselor on a church staff, as I have been, I have had the privilege of connecting with a lot of women in, you know, around emotionally sensitive topics. And um, a lot of times they have said to me, you know, that 
either they've never told anyone or at times that they would not want their pastor to know certain sensitive things. And so I think that that's just something I kind of bring in a way as I listen is kind of how do women think about these issues? You know, I don't think that you only capture a male perspective, but I think some of the topics that you're capturing, there's also kind of another side to it. And so sometimes I I leave thinking about those elements a little bit. That's fascinating. Yeah, that's super insightful. I imagine there's a lot of different areas that, A, Josh and I are blind to because we're males. But secondly, that church leadership is probably blind to because it is male dominated. And therefore, there are these kind of maybe awkward or just uh, uncomfortable uh, realities that that creates for women that I think church leadership would never even know about. Yeah. Yeah. Have there been other moments? I'm sure there have. Now I want to like go back and ask you about every single episode, but we don't have time for that. Um, mm. Are there other moments that kind of jump out at you, or was that the one that really highlighted that idea the most? Um, I'm looking at the list of your episodes now, and I think probably the managing leadership anxiety, I would have had some some thoughts on that just because women in leadership spaces – often have different struggles. So again, not better or worse, but just kind of different reasons for leadership anxiety. Certainly, you know, societal views of women and, you know, when women may express opinions forcefully or get into conflict or things like that, you know, they're criticized or viewed differently than when men do those same exact things. And so I think sometimes society has just trained women to silence themselves or to doubt themselves. And so I think that that may be a a cause of leadership anxiety for women. So that's another thing that comes to mind for me. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, if you are listening to this and ever have those kinds of thoughts, I am super interested in that and would love, even if whatever we post doesn't seem appropriate, like if it doesn't seem directly relevant to whatever we're posting, we would love your thoughts on, on that because that's an interesting part of the conversation. Uh, but Shelly, what about you? Particular moments or themes that we've had that either stick out to you or that you had uh, a different perspective on as Josh's wife? Yeah, I was kind of looking over the list of the different podcasts. I think each episode I take something away, but I, I think typically I really like the thoughts at the end because it's just a little snippet, but it, it makes me stop and ponder and think. And I don't, I just, I really enjoy those. Um, I was thinking about though, what episode kind of stood out. And I think it's been a while since I've listened to it, but the why church has been something that I've been thinking about a lot lately. And the idea of plugging into a church and how difficult that is on anyone who doesn't work a typical schedule. So those night shift workers and how many years we've done, you know, night shifts and um, where Josh has missed out on things or, you know, so we've gone as a partial family or we've not gone to things or anyway. And just the idea of inviting people in, we are in process of looking at a new church and even just this morning, like walking into church and just being invited in to worship just uh, leaves such a different feeling for me, who's very community oriented, very people oriented, I want to know what people are thinking, how they're feeling, what I can do to come alongside of them. And even just walking into church, you know, and seeing a handful of people, some I know, some I don't know, versus walking into a church where I don't know anybody, and I leave the service and I still don't know anybody. I guess I've been thinking a lot about why church? Why is that important to us? Why do we, why do we need church outside of you know, listening to church on a podcast or on YouTube. Uh, what's the importance of gathering? Mm. So that's really good, Shelley. I want to, if I can put you on the spot. Uh, you are the yeah. person who listens to the most podcasts of the four of us. I'm just super curious what other podcasts you listen to. That has nothing oh, to goodness. do with the topic, um, <laughs> and we can cut this piece out if you if we need to. But 
Uh, I didn't realize you were a podcast listener, and I'm always curating my list. Uh, even if you don't remember the exact titles or you remember the people or the topics or whatever, I'm just curious what kind of things you listen to. Okay, I'm all over the board with, with this. So I I like crime things, like um, unsolved mystery kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have that. And then I have uh, I have you guys. And then one I really have been enjoying is uh, Made for This with uh, Jenny Allen, who I just find amazing um, in her thought process. So I have all of those. And then I have things like Death in the Afternoon, because who doesn't want to learn about crematories and... <laughs> Like, what happens awesome. uh, when you die? So, you know, um, I have things like that. I'm kind of all over the board. I love that. I am so excited to be in that list with incredible <laughs> people like Jenny <laughs> Allen. Um, I, I'm i just excited. I, we made the same list as her. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> you also made the same list as a crematorium. So don't get too excited. <laughs> Well, I think we should give a title for this, like as if you're having a whole playlist. The title of your playlist is Morgues and the People Who Send Them There. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. There is a huge bunch of people like the true crime podcast genre is a huge thing. I hear this is not my thing, but I get hear reference to it very regularly. That's so interesting to me. Yeah, I I don't know. I love I love a good mystery, I guess. I don't know. That's awesome. I listen to more than I probably should, but uh. it, what fascinates me is the number of people from my work at 911 who listen to true crime podcasts. And I think do you not get enough of this while you're at work? <laughs> yeah, amazing. that would be interesting. Yeah, I would think that like that would be the opposite like of anything they would possibly ever want to do outside of work. But I suppose I listen to discipleship and theology and church leadership podcasts. So it's not like I get sick of those things. I'm in the field I'm in because I like those things. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of being in the field that you're in, one of the one of our most faithful listeners is, has a Instagram handle of Butterfly Princess 16 And I don't want to leave this podcast without calling them out specifically because they've been super engaged in this whole process. And they talked about on a comment on our Facebook about being in childcare for the last 30 years of their life and then being a cancer survivor and then moving on to mentoring other women who go through cancer and finding a gift of God from all of these different roles that they were in. And I was so appreciative that they shared kind of their journey because it highlighted to me that, yes, as you say, Josh, uh, you're in the field that you're in for a reason, but sometimes that reason is is that's God's calling, that's God's gift to you, and it might mm-hmm. change over time. And she is finding that it is changing over time in her life, and she's seeing God's hand in that. And that, to me, is super motivating, knowing that God remains faithful throughout our lives, even if as one career ends and another begins or another opportunity comes. I appreciate knowing that God remains faithful. Yeah, absolutely. And I am also super grateful to her. There are a couple people who very faithfully comment, and it is wildly encouraging when people comment on our posts. So just for that, thank you so much. You are wildly encouraging to me. Yes. So we have probably a couple of more minutes before we transition into other segments of our podcast. I want to open it right back up to the wives. And is there anything else as you've listened that you thought, man, I would really love to reply to what was said. And this is what I really have to say. Well, I think one of the earliest reactions I remember having you guys I forget even which episode it was. It might have even been the second or third episode. Um, And you were speaking about friendship with Jesus, I think. I'm trying to remember the context. You were talking about how it's been hard for you sometimes to conceptualize being Jesus' friend or God's friend. Do you remember that? Am I I ringing any bells here? Yes, I remember that. I think I'm the one who said that. Okay, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I remember thinking, 
And again, I don't know if this is a woman's perspective or just my perspective, but I was like, huh, that's interesting. I feel like that's the one thing that I really have always had a very specific conceptualization about since I was young. Some of my earliest, I guess, God memories, if you want to call them that, relationship with God memories, were of me falling asleep, picturing me and Jesus playing hopscotch, or I pictured myself in the palm of his hand, like literally like putting my head down on his hand, like my pillow was like his hand. And so it was just a very like connected feeling that I always had um, with Jesus. And so it just surprised me when you guys were saying that. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. That's that's the one. Sometimes I feel like I have to back up and connect with reverence more because I feel like I've got the the kind of intimate friendship part as my primary conceptualization for how I relate to God. So that was just an interesting thought. And I don't know if if any other listeners out there relate to that or where you would fall on that comment or like below. Oh, wait, what am I supposed to say? (laughs) Put Put a comment in the chat. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I'm not a professional podcaster like you guys, so I don't know all the right things to say, but. Well, I think professional means you make money doing something. And so we are definitely not that. This has made us exactly and specifically zero dollars. No, not exactly and specifically. (laughs) It makes us negative dollars. We have to pay to host this on the web. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, things, conversations we are anti pros. Not to have. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> but what about you, Shelley? Yeah, I'm trying to think through. I think um, I struggle with like going back and remembering what each episode was. But I do know that there are times that things have been said and I, I get really excited about those things that are being said. And I don't think I've ever had like a negative reaction or think like, oh, gosh, I don't I haven't seen that play out, you know? I love the authenticity that you guys have. And like I think Kristen said it earlier, it's like this is this is you guys talking on the phone. This is the conversation. And even uh let's see, Josh, wasn't it even uh our oldest that was kind of surprised by how easy it was to listen to the podcast? Just that it was really real. Well, yeah, and I should highlight that that actually has been my favorite listener feedback moment is when our oldest son came home from work, having listened to our podcast while working in the berry fields. And he came home and he said, Oh my gosh, you guys took so openly and honestly about prayer and about how the, that it's a struggle and you have to learn and practice how to pray. It doesn't just like you, you have to learn how you're going to relate to God. And, and that, he's that like, can change. Yeah. And that that could change. Right. Yeah. And so he was so motivated to be like, during this gap year program that I'm going to go do, I want to experiment with how I'm going to pray and and interact with God. That was just the most amazing moment. That's so cool. That's so cool. I, I don't know that we could have a better high moment to transition off of than that. Like, I think you and I have talked about that moment and said, multiple times that that one moment makes it all worth it a hundred percent but uh you know we always shift from our main conversation into a moment where we just share random thoughts we've had throughout the week about whatever Kristen and Shelley I would love to just hear whatever other thoughts you've had this week uh Kristen why don't we start with you share uh, something else you've been thinking about this week yeah sure well um You and I uh, recently decided to uh, start our own book club with each other. And so I know your listeners are familiar with the ridiculous amount of pages you read on a daily and monthly and yearly basis. It's like 30,000, right, last year or something? No, uh, 10. I think I hit 10,000 last year. Oh, okay. I I amplified it in my mind. But anyway. Josh, what did you hit last year? Wasn't it 17,000 or something like that? Some insane. Yeah, I did. Yes, but I appreciate the fact that your wife is trying to put you in first place, even though you clearly lost. I think, yeah, it's it's like it's just times whatever, you know, a million. So 
Um, but anyway, I, I wanted um, to, us to kind of read maybe some of the same books and talk about them more specifically, which maybe was inspired by the podcast. I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to get in on the inspiring people, the, you know, vibing here. But anyway, the book we're reading right now is called Slow Church, and it's by C. Christopher Smith and John Pattison. I think, Shelley, you were referring earlier to kind of the why church episode and going back to that. And there have been a few different points in our lives where we've asked that question. And um, I remember when we were starting seminary and looking for a church at that time in the Boston area, and we were struggling to find something. And we were asking ourselves that question of kind of what is church and why do we do it? And, you know, what's the point of this gathering thing? And then I think the pandemic has also really brought up a lot of that again. We've seen a lot of people who um, had been churchgoers who stopped being churchgoers. Um, And one of the things that I really noticed about that was that people started actually really having a genuine Sabbath again when they were maybe just watching church online or maybe even not watching church at all during the pandemic. But they were able to spend time with their families and rest. And Sunday was, I think, in some ways became a little bit more like what the Sabbath was in some ways intended to be, actually restful. And so it made me start reflecting on church and kind of the doing aspects of church. You know, when it reopened, um, you know, at various points in the pandemic and people did not come back. I know some of that was for COVID reasons, so that's certainly valid. But I think some people who in some ways just decided, you know what, church is exhausting. Like, it's tiring. It's not life-giving to me. I feel like I'm asked to do a lot of things or there's pressure in some way. Um, And this is just my own observations and and some of the things I've read, you know, studies that people have done about kind of millennials in particular and why they have not returned to church. Um, We see this kind of idea that, you know, there's been, they call it, it kind of a McDonaldization of church in a sense, kind of um, very packaged and very branded, a lot of business principles that have become not just helpful tools for the church, but really driving principles, pastors becoming more like executives um, than shepherds. And so I've been thinking a lot about that and just noticing in myself kind of what are the things spiritually that I crave um, I've always been someone who craves simplicity and not overcomplicating things. And so this book is really making me think about some of the the slowing down, the patient aspects of spirituality. And I think that connects even to some of the things we were saying earlier about, you know, it's it's hip and cool to start a new podcast, but if the requirement was have a 20-year friendship first, fewer people would do it. It's not like you guys just kind of popped this out of nowhere. This is built off of something. And I think that's one of the most refreshing parts about the podcast is that you didn't microwave this and it shows in your conversations. There's depth. It's not just you spouting off thoughts that you've had for two seconds. Like you guys have really worked to cultivate wisdom in this way that this book also describes. And I think there's something really rich and needed about that today where there's so much information and so many channels and podcasts and everything else we can listen to just cutting through all the noise to like what's what's deep what's real what's refreshing what's life-giving um i think we're all just tired you know so that's what i've been thinking about lately Mm, that's good that's good yeah love that what about you shelly So uh, interesting. I, too, have been thinking about how we have come out of this pandemic time, but on more of the side of community. So I am realizing in myself that I am feeling very soul tired and kind of thinking through what is causing that. And for me, it's lack of community. My two very most dear friends have moved away. So just trying to trying to find community, trying to find those really good friendships. Because as you guys know, friendships take time. They take being deliberate. And though I want that terribly, I'm also just exhausted. 
we came out of the pandemic, like a lot of people just like to the rush of life again, and the kids are active and busy and we're working and, um, and all of those things are good, but my soul needs community. So I guess my thought this over the last, I don't know, a couple of weeks has been, why were we created? And, and, uh, I was talking with Josh on the way home from church today, just about this, uh, triune God and how, God in in and of himself is community and that he created us to have communion with. And we are created to commune with others. And I feel like the pandemic really isolated us and made us think that we are okay with being an individualized society, that we are okay with uh, not needing anyone. We can do it on our own. And the reality is we can't. And for so many, so many years in history, we have lived communal lives. We have lived in multi-generational households or we have lived in multi-generational communities, uh, living in close-knit neighborhoods. And we did life together. We knew everything about everything that was going on. And Uh, I think we were already headed that way pre-pandemic, and I think we've come out of the pandemic really feeling like, I don't need anyone. And yet, our anxiety is on the rise, our depression's on the rise, things are happening, and it's, I believe, because we do need community more than we realize. So I have been really focused on that, I guess, and just what that means and what I can do about that for myself and for others. I referenced earlier that I listened to Jenny Allen and her podcast, and she has a great book called Find Your People. And it's all about like kind of just getting those one or two or three really close people in your life that they're the people that push you forward. They're the ones that keep you honest, right? They're the ones that you can go and you know call at two in the morning because you're just struggling. And I think we all need that way more than we realize we do. And I think we live in a society right now that is just drowning and needing somebody to come along and pick them up. Mm, So good. So true. And thank you for your vulnerability about that. That is amazing. Yeah. I have to say I'm really, really encouraged by this church that we are switching to you referenced earlier that we are checking it out. I think we've done more than check it out. I think in the last couple of weeks, we've just nailed it and said, nope, this is our church. And True. Um, I'm looking forward to finding community in that place. I think I think that's a good place for it. Excellent. Now, to be clear, it is an Assemblies of God church, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us are pagans. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Pentecostals. Pentecostals. Was, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, and one of those P words, you know. <laughs> oh, man, well. But I, we really would love to invite uh, people into this conversation. I, I know I said this once earlier, but, uh, you know, please take a moment and uh, comment on one of our posts, share our posts, and uh, if you have someone in your life that you would like to start a conversation with josh mentioned and i mentioned several folks who have used our podcast as conversation starters in their lives and we would love for our podcast to be a conversation starter in your life and so please share this or any episode with somebody but then let us know we would love to hear how our podcast has been able to be a conversation starter for you that would be amazing. It really would. And like you said earlier, it's such an encouragement when we see those posts and those comments. So thank you all. But we want to end this episode. We always do a which Josh question. And we thought it was only appropriate that instead of a which Josh, we would do a which wife. And Josh made me make sure that I was spelling that W-H-I-C-H, which wife. <laughs> uh which wife grew up believing that conkywampus was a real word? <laughs> uh, that would be me, Shelly. Uh, yeah, awesome. so that's all thanks to my dad. So the real word is 
I don't even know if I can say it. Cat cattywampus? What is the real word? You got it. Okay, cattywampus is the real word. I grew up believing that the word was conkywampus. Like my whole life, I thought it was conkywampus. And I said it one night when uh, Josh and I were first married and he just laughed and he laughed and he's like, that is not the word. I'm like, no, it is. It's that. That's the word. That's what I've been taught my whole entire life. And he's like, that's not the word. And we went round and round about it. And then sometime later, I don't know, it was brought up to my mom that uh, I thought that this was a word and that, you know, Josh and I had had this little argument about it. And she started laughing and she was like, oh, my goodness. No, that was just your dad being funny. And he thought it was hilarious to change up the word. And that's just what he did. And so my whole life was a lie based on that one word. That's awesome. (laughs) Well, let's take this opportunity to make it real. Ladies and gentlemen, my single (laughs) solitary request to you this week, other than liking and sharing uh, our episodes, is to find a way to use the word conkywampus in a sentence. (laughs) Uh, That is an important, important thing we can all do together. (laughs) If nothing else, it will make you laugh. Yes. I love it. That is such a great word. Oh, my gosh. So, Shelly, Kristen, thank you both for being on the podcast. As Josh said earlier, thank you for supporting us through this podcast, giving us the time and the space to record and edit and do all the things. We love you. We appreciate you. uh, So thank you. And so for Josh, are we on for next week? Absolutely. I can't wait. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Goodbye, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.